online LPTL course contemporary architecture and design. In the previous uh, class till now we have discussed about the uh, genesis of modernism uh, after post industrial revolution and within that I have uh, we have seen that uh, in the in the beginning uh, there was two different style and gradually how modernism uh, uh, flowed and different uh, uh, vari uh, various other uh, movements within the modernist uh, era uh, was evolved. So uh, before we uh, discussed in the just uh, in the previous class, we started discussing uh, the uh, time frame of modernism. And uh, uh, modernism was after post-industrial revolution. There was two different style, uh, and one for the machine and, and one against the machine. Within against the machine, there are also two different style: Art Nouveau and uh, Art and Craft movement. Now we will begin with the uh, different phases of modernism and. Um, uh, there are, as uh, we have seen, there were uh, mostly three phases of modernism. In the be beginning, there was uh, different style emerge, uh, where uh, there were uh, lesser similarity uh, within the, the styles. But gradually, uh, modernism um, progressed, and um, uh, there was a holistic, unified uh, thought uh, in the uh, stylistic and uh, conceptual uh, 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 vision. And uh, later, it in the late modern, we will see that a, mo a more minimalist um, uh, approach and internationalist uh, style was followed. So uh, today, we will uh, start with the phase one, the be uh, beginning. And there, we will start with the Bauhaus uh, movement, which was one of the ar earliest movement of modernism. And in the uh, before starting the Bauhaus movement, we will just uh, recapitulate what modernism was. So it went beyond uh, the architecture in that uh, we have already seen so before architecture mostly was symmetrical building so uh, if we look at the traditional um, building uh, maybe it uh, uh, through the gothic and also in the um, classical architecture in uh, greek style or, uh, which is trabeated and also in roman style pantheon and parthenon uh, so everything most of the things were um, bilaterally symmetrical now um, uh, it, this asymmetry uh, started growing in art novo as well where we have seen the uh, organic uh, biomorphic um, uh, not organic biomorphic uh, lines and which is whiplash lines started to em uh, emerge and antonio gaudi's design in um, Park Guell, uh, Casa Mila, and uh, Sagrada Familia, we have seen uh, the asymmetry was also uh, started. And then also in uh, uh, we, uh, the other characteristics is uh, the simplistic pattern and form or abstraction. So as uh, we are going towards the more uh, newer isms, uh, more contemporary isms, uh, so uh, we, we are going uh, from figurative depiction to more abstraction. So in organic architecture and other um, architecture movement, which is part of uh, modernist uh, movement, we will see these uh, features. And then we will see uh, the purity of design and um, Purity in design can be in the uh, form of material. So, as the material, uh, uh, the material's texture and color will be used as aesthetic uh, value. The construction materials, uh, so that is there in the brutalism. The concrete is used, and also in the other uh, isms like uh, internationalism, the steel and glass was used like their own uh, color and texture. And then uh, we will see the purity of form, purity of geometric form, and the basic geometric uh, cubes or cuboid, and then um, cylinder and um, uh, pure domical uh, shapes are used extensively, uh, which was not there um, before. So uh, uh, before uh, pre-industrial revolution, there were a lot of different from, uh, forms juxtaposed, and then they create the holistic building identity. And uh, also in the painting, we will see uh, some movements like the Stigel and Bauhaus. They will uh, uh, they will be based on pure geometric form as well as the pure color. Pure color here are the primary um, uh, colors, and uh, in additive mixture, which is uh, yellow, blue, and uh, red. Uh, these are pure colors because if you use uh, these three primary colors, you will get the secondary colors. And if you use uh, secondary colors with another uh, blend, secondary colors with another primary color, you will get a tertiary color. So all these uh, all uh, spectrums of color can be uh, derived from these three primary colors, which is red, uh, yeah, yellow, and blue. So those colors um, uh, with the uh, white and black and gray was used. And that was the style of uh, many of the modernist uh, style adopted that uh, color palette. Even the material, the new material was used. Uh, not only the purity of material, even the new material uh, started to uh, 
uh, come within the architecture and new construction technique uh, started. So architecture changed is uh, complete paradigm. So uh, the way uh, uh, previous buildings uh, were built, the technology and the new innovation of uh, uh, technology and material changed the um, uh, complete uh, structure and com uh, complete uh, visualization of architecture. So new materials were uh, like steel, glass and concrete which were overly used. Now if we look at some of the modernist uh, painting and uh, design and architecture, we see some similarities. So as we were discussing this uh, primary colors um, was there in the, in the furniture design as well as in the painting and um, you know, this is um, a painting by famous architect uh, Frank Lloyd Wright which is also uh, similar to the furniture design and this is a vestigial movement which all um, talks about the similar color palette. Then we look at the building, the buildings were more abstract and geometric. Earlier the buildings, if you um, um, uh, think about the pre-industrial uh, revolution buildings, uh, it can be renaissance building, it can be classical and it can be uh, gothic. There was a uh, uh, symmetry and then a uh, lot of different forms and ornamentation was there. But in the high modern, we see uh, more geometric, pure geometric forms and where uh, the uh, complete paradigm of uh, design was different. So we see uh, steel, glass and concrete and brick and here also in these uh, three uh, um, uh, buildings. But these three buildings are from three different movements within modernism. This is Bauhaus movement, this is internationalism uh, movement and this is uh, the monolithic uh, which is just after internationalist movement where um, uh, they uh, started using uh, identifiable forms in a different way. So this is part of dome, this is part of, um, this is cuboid, but there is a bilateral symmetry. So aesthetics are also important here, but this is more of a functional uh, features. And there, uh, there was a different uh, style evolved from, uh, which is called internationalism. We will uh, go uh, step by step. Uh, today we are discussing Bauhaus. Later we will uh, discuss how these are uh, similar and what are the dissimilarities between these three movements. Now, uh, if we look at uh, look beyond architecture, then um, um, in the fashion and automobile design and product design, um, there uh, there are similar thoughts and similar concepts were uh, there. As we were discussing in the fashion, also uh, if we look at the previous uh, styles of uh, costume design, it will be much more um, uh, exaggerated. Even if you look at the hat before, this is this is 1920s fashion, which is modern uh, mo uh, early modern uh, fashion. So before that, in uh, pre-industrial revolutions, uh, the hat would have been um, added with feathers and other ornamentation, flowers and other things will be there. Even in the uh, drapery, there will be um, more exaggerated gowns. But here, if you look at these, uh, they are uh, quite simplistic. Even the hat was coming uh, down to the minimalist uh, style in the women's fashion. As well as in the men's fashion, we can uh, see that uh, a clear uh, blazer and a suit, that um, was the style in uh, modernist movement. Before that, there will be a lot of frills and other ornaments, uh, ornamented um, uh, aesthetical uh, exaggeration will be there in the men's fashion as well. So here also in the product design, uh, the bottle design, we see a clear design in the uh, Chanel um, uh, perfume bottle and um, so as in the uh, car design, we see a pure uh, geometric form uh, with the blend of the uh, ergonomics and the aerodynamics of um, car design which was required. So this is more rectilinear and this is a uh, curvilinear, a lot of curvilinearity added over here. So th that we have discussed earlier a little bit. Now if we look at the time frame, uh, so this is the time frame of modernism. From here it starts, this is pre-modern which is just after post-industrial revolution and from here the post-modern era starts. Uh, so this is uh, almost 1920 to here it's um, uh, 1980 and uh, in this time frame we see the Bauhaus is the uh, almost in the beginning with the first branch which is functionalism which talks about function first and then the aesthetics uh, so the caption was uh, form follows function so this was uh, told in um, Chicago uh, school but Bauhaus school is also uh, f um, uh, also follows the same thought process which is total uh, in totality functionalism in functionalism we have two different movements as we had uh, two different movements in um, for uh, against the machine movement as well Bauhaus was more European and then uh, Chicago school uh, started in USA but there are uh, similarities in the thought process but there are also uh, dissimilarities in the visual uh, style and uh, the form uh, 
style of the form and um, some thought process. So ba we will discuss Bauhaus, which is part of the um, functionalist movement. And uh, then we will also, uh, in, in the next um, class, we will discuss a movement which is parallel to Bauhaus, which was um, in uh, fine arts, which is the stigil movement, which has, which goes hand in hand with Bauhaus. A lot of uh, Bauhaus architects and painters were also, some of the works are in uh, the stigil and they were collaborated together and they were, um, uh, their visual uh, palette was quite similar and the thought process is also pretty similar. So we'll discuss uh, the stigil just after Bauhaus, um, it is a discussion of Bauhaus. So let's start with the Bauhaus. It is uh, in the phase one, as we have seen in modernist phase one, we were discussing uh, Bauhaus. So Bauhaus uh, was part of the functionalism as as well as the Chicago School, which was in America, Bauhaus started in Europe. And uh, two of the main uh, and famous buildings of Bauhaus was Fagus uh, Boot Factory where, and um, Bauhaus Building. Uh, Bauhaus Building was a school um, or uh, uh, design school or um, university where, uh, where uh, the Bauhaus concept of uh, design was uh, followed. And this was designed by Walter Gropius, who was part of the uh, faculty uh, member as well, um, uh, faculty member of the school as well. And he himself designed Fagus Boot Factory wi uh, with Adolf Mayer. So these are the uh, two buildings we'll discuss and uh, we'll try to interpret what are the um, characteristic uh, features of Bauhaus uh, movement. Now if we look at the Bauhaus uh, movement's uh, architectural features, uh, the term is German. It started Bauhaus School and Fagus Boot uh, Factory both um, were in Germany, and um, from there it um, uh, spread. Um, uh, it, it got spread in Europe, and later in the other uh, architectural movements also as well. Bauhaus style was highly followed, and Bauhaus was one of the very um, key uh, movements in early phases of modernist uh, uh, style and which was carried forward in the list uh, late, uh, a lot of the uh, visuals and thought process what uh, was carried forward in the list uh, later uh, phases of modernism uh, and um, they got a lot of influence from Bauhaus so in the late modern style what we will see and as we were discussing in the three different styles Bauhaus style was um, carried forward and as it talks about the minimalist uh, approach and uh, uh, pure uh, geometry and um, f uh, function first and then form, which was the key concept of late modern uh, era as well. So we uh, see some uh, f uh, features which is I, um, the based on ideal and simplified form as uh, this will be uh, more pure form in geometric, geometry, pure geometric form and pure color. Pure color as we were um, discussing that, uh, this, that means primary color and the pure, uh, white and black. White is a uh, color where every lights are equal uh, in equal proportion. So if you uh, mix all the uh, seven uh, lights, you will get uh, um, all, all the colors, uh, spectrum of the seven color of rainbow, you will get white. And if there's no, uh, no light, then it will be black. So black and white and of course gray uh, tints are there and then with the primary color. Then pure functionalism, function was the first and the key uh, protagonist of the design and then the form evolved as the function grows. And then uh, urban and industrial, um, um, in industrial modern context evolved as a new vocabulary of uh, aesthetics. It was more urban and has an industrial look into that. So Fagus Boot Factory and other uh, buildings and other utilitarian urban uh, buildings where the key features were uh, the uh, key uh, key buildings where Bauhaus uh, style was adopted. Then um, if we look at the process of design, the rationality of the uh, design, which is the functionalism, uh, uh, which comes from functionalism and where techniques and the material was the first and then uh, the construction uh, process was uh, adopted with that and then the, the truth of material, the material was used, uh, material uh, was not cladded and uh, no added uh, different color was there um, there on the material um, except this only pure, three pure color and material was um, uh, and the most of the material, many uh, uh, of the materials which can be exposed as its own color, um, um, uh, can stand as a, uh, with its own color and texture was exposed. And then uh, that emerged the beauty uh, uh, through the rational design. So, uh, and uh, prefabrication was um, uh, started because as we were discussing earlier that um, 
industrial revolution gives uh, birth to a new uh, possibility of prefabrication. The uh, mod, uh, Bauhaus movement adopted that and acknowledged that. So, a lot of prefabricated materials, prefabricated uh, construction uh, techniques were used. Uh, not as extensively as we see right now prefabrication. Uh, so, uh, there are a uh, few other movements which um, exaggerated the possibility of pre, uh, prefabrication, which is metabolism, which will uh, be discussed later. But uh, uh, in Bauhaus also, it's started, but not as uh, we see right now. R right now, uh, prefabrication has a, uh, all different dimension. So, everything can be prefabricated, but uh, during that time, what was the, uh, 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 within the limit of possibility, they started using prefabrication. But this was opposed uh, just before the movement, which is uh, against the machine, machine movement. They opposed the complete uh, possibility of prefabrication, but Bauhaus adopted that um, possibility. And then uh, standardization of product, a particular standard of product, particular uh, dimensions of um, uh, fenestration, doors, uh, windows has um, uh, has been selected so that uh, it can be ma mass manufactured and everything can be snap fitted within the construction site, uh, which was again um, uh, opposite to the uh, for the machine art nouveau and art and craft movement, and also that uh, gives uh, birth to the possibility of uh, mass production. Now, uh, these are the uh, two examples um, um, for the key examples in Bauhaus movement, which we will discuss today. So, uh, let us first discuss Bauhaus building, which is designed by Walter Gropius. And this is an educational center for art and craft, which is established in 1925. So, 1920 is a birth of modernism, different uh, movements started, and almost uh, after five years, uh, uh, 1925, Bauhaus, this Bauhaus building uh, emerged in uh, Dessau, which is in Germany. Uh, so, uh, he himself, Walter Gropius himself was the first director of the school and he started a new uh, vocabulary, new style of uh, visual um, uh, school of thought, which is uh, Bauhaus uh, school. And uh, the, uh, so, this is, uh, as we were discussing, this is functionalist, uh, functionalist movement um, altogether and that is the function comes first. And here, if we uh, look at the building, um, as we have seen here in this uh, two photographs of the building, uh, so material of steel and concrete and structural elements were uh, used as a material. Then glass curtain wall uh, was used, which is a common feature adapted in internationalism, which will come later, just after Bauhaus, um, uh, so which is also has some similarity with the Bauhaus. And then um, here, if we look at the three wings so, uh, were arranged asymmetrically and then uh, connected with the different workshops and dormitories. If we look at the building, so three different wings were there and which is asymmetry. And again, we are discussing the asymmetry was first uh, tried to um, um, emphasized as a, aesthetic, um, a new aesthetic vocabulary in uh, modern style. Before that, uh, most early architects used to think that uh, bilateral symmetry or will be a better composition and bilateral symmetry was followed mostly in the previous architectural style. Uh, but it started to break from post-industrial revolution uh, against the machine movement even in the for the machine movement. But in Bauhaus it uh, was uh, uh, went in the um, in a different dimension altogether. And so new uh, uh, vocabulary was the as uh, asymmetry, and then uh, um, uh, different workshops were uh, designed, and that is how the form evolved. So there were th three different workshops. That is why in the form you see uh, three different layers. So uh, the function comes first, and uh, because of the three workshop, the form evolved like three different um, three-legged um, form. Uh, so um, so absolutely, this is fo uh, form is uh, following the function. Then asymmetry expressed uh, the school's uh, functionalist approach. As uh, the forms and the requirements were different, uh, one uh, workshop might be um, uh, requiring a larger uh, space, and the other workshop might be requiring a smaller space. So uh, this workshop becomes larger, and that workshop becomes uh, smaller. So it com uh, it conveys uh, how much, uh, what is the requirement of the. Um, uh, of the of the design it could have been um, just like um, uh, just uh, just like a symmetrical uh, three uh, wing thing and then um, everything could have been fitted into the form but he did not do that so he uh, used um, which is uh, which requires a larger um, area he uh, did um, he made a larger area which requires a smaller area it was smaller otherwise it could have been like three equal uh, division and one part could have been blended within this and then a uh, smaller part could have been adjusted like this and the larger 
part one could have been in two different uh, area. So it could have been uh, something like that, but it was not like that. The functional requirement just uh, gives birth to the form. So also uh, it uh, showed the beauty uh, through the pragmatic functionalism uh, that could have been combined with the um, uh, form as uh, the function. Now if we look at the um, elements, material and uh, color and texture which is the key uh, elements of design. Uh, in perspective of that if we look at the design, so um, we see uh, the uh, various cuboids are juxtaposed uh, each other. So th there are different cuboids and which is uh, combined together and creates uh, this form. And as we were discussing this is grey and uh, black, white, these three color with yellow, red and we will also see blue within this, uh, yeah, here you can see the blue which is used within the uh, interior. So these three primary colors with uh, uh, white, black and uh, grey was used. And here also if you see the railing it is uh, pure black and uh, white, this was a conscious decision um, which emerged from the color palette of the visual style of the building. And here also we uh, look, at, uh, look at the material, uh, the material, uh, the glass is not the tinted glass, it is the uh, glass which is purely uh, transparent glass. And then we see um, all these um, other elements. Um, uh, which which has its uh, pure color like uh, this uh, uh, steel uh, frames uh, steel members was not painted it's like um, it's uh, it, um, own it uh, shows its own uh, color and uh, texture so now uh, let's discuss the other building which is Fagus Boat Factory which is also designed by Walter Gropius along with Adolf Mayer. Uh, so it's in uh, also in Germany, Alfred, uh, which is a uh, again an assembly of different cuboids and the material was reinforced concrete steel structure and the brick was exposed. So uh, brick was again not painted and the color of the brick was uh, used as uh, it's uh, the, ma uh, the material and the aesthetics value of that. And um, glass curtain was is also used and it was not a, even a uh, painted glass, uh, the um, properly translucent uh, transparent glass was used. So exposed uh, brick and this kind of style was again followed in the later stages of uh, modernist uh, movement which is uh, brick brutalism. Brutalism talks about the exposed concrete wall and then brick brutalism talks about um, the aesthetic um, style of exposed brick uh, which also started from Bauhaus and a uh, few examples of Bauha Bauhaus follows that. Uh, uh, Fagus boat factory is one of them. If we look at the building, so this is actually the color of the uh, brick. This brick is used, and the groove of the construction is the, constru uh, the is the line which is. Uh, uh, followed as an aesthetic element and if we look at again this is a uh, combination of um, solid and void and we look at the um, glass curtain wall again and even the structural members were shown from outside. So this is you can see this is uh, actually the column coming uh, behind this uh, this cuboid and again this column which is uh, clearly visible from outside and that becomes an aesthetic element and that is a punctuation between uh, the solid and void. This is a void and then uh, solid which is the structural member which is column again a void and then structural member column and then uh, uh, void. So void and uh, voids were used by glass curtain wall and the solid is the column and this is how it was been designed and again if you look at this uh, steel members are uh, visible from outside. Again if you look at um, uh, think about the uh, for the machine movement. Um, uh, crystal Palace, if you look, uh, so Crystal Palace has the structural members visible from outside which was the vault on top and then we see the uh, 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 cuboid where the structural members were there. This is a uh, part of the struss and all these elements creates the aesthetics. Here also in Bauhaus uh, all the uh, structural elements are creating the aesthetics. So Bauhaus has some uh, similarities in um, that way Bauhaus ha has some similarity with the uh, uh, for the machine movement um, as well. And then uh, we see the exposed brickwork and the glass curtain wall which is visible from inside as well. And here you can see clearly the uh, steel members which is uh, visible from outside. Now if we look at some Bauhaus uh, paintings, um, af after architecture if we look at uh, painting, so they also have a similar thought process. And after that we will also discuss uh, this Tijil painting, this Tijil was uh, mostly um, evolved in the uh, fine arts domain. This Tijil painting and Bauhaus paintings they are very very much similar. And um, in uh, Bauhaus painting one of the uh, uh, pioneering painter was uh, Vasily Kandinsky who was, uh, who was uh, a Russian painter and uh, part of the Bauhaus movement. So if we look at the painting and um, 
uh, this uh, painting has only few uh, geometric lines, um, um, uh, very uh, rectilinear uh, features and pure circles. Curvilinearity was uh, the, uh, achieved through pure circles and few curves were also there. But together if we look at the painting, this painting uh, is just a pure painting and this painting does not convey anything. So this uh, does not convey a sun or uh, something circular, it is just a pure circle and has no meaning into it. So that was the uh, concept of Bauhaus and the estigial movement the painting will be only for aesthetic composition no uh, they will not convey any meaning and uh, uh, hidden meaning into it so these compositions um, uh, together it's just uh, created to uh, grab visu uh, visual attention um, uh, from the user and um, they follow a particular eye movement within the painting so what is the eye movement for that we'll need to uh, understand what are the uh, things and uh, let's discuss what is the uh, stylistic feature of the painting first so this is pure design purity of design was used because if you see mostly triangle um, a slanted um, square and then a few um, juxtaposition of a few um, circles over here and then again um, a triangle and all these pure geometric forms are uh, the key elements of the design and basic element uh, which is primary color mostly you will see look at the what are the dominant uh, color here which is um, blue yellow red and also green is used in Frank Lloyd Wright's painting we have seen the green is also used because green has its own identity which is uh, also in uh, uh, color mix and green is also RGB um, is uh, G is, uh, stands for green. So green is also used in some of the color, but you will not see much um, emphasis on the tertiary color. You will see uh, purple in some cases, but those are not the predominant um, focal point. Uh, pre um, they can be in the focal point, but they, they are not the predominant color palette within the um, frame. So uh, now if we look at the eye movement, uh, there uh, um, first to understand that we need to, need to know Gutenberg's diagram. Gutenberg was one of the, uh, as you know, uh, he was um, one of the pioneering uh, person in um, Renaissance. He uh, do, um, um, uh, designed the press. So uh, Gutenberg, after designing the press, he uh, um, published, um, uh, the Bible was uh, uh, printed there and a lot of newspapers, pamphlets uh, started printing in the Guten, uh, Gutenberg's press. And uh, before that everything uh, sh um, uh, was hand painted and hand uh, drafted posters were there. So uh, uh, with the emergence of the press uh, uh, machine, uh, there a lot of uh, printing started happening. So Gut uh, Gutenberg uh, evolved a um, visual reading pattern uh, uh, while uh, after printing these presses and then uh, he uh, created a formula, uh, created a, di a diagram how people look at a uh, visual. So um, what he says is uh, when people are uh, conditioned to uh, read from right side to left side and from top to bottom there is a conditioning happening. So first when they look at a composition they will look at this area first because they will start reading from that side and then I will go to the next strong fellow area and then I will go to this side and it will end here. So uh, because when uh, we turn the page we will read this part and then turn the page. So this is uh, becoming the first important point where uh, the visual will grab eyes attention and then it will uh, gradually uh, follow this line and uh, by this process because when we uh, turn the pre, um, page we will de uh, definitely look at this area and uh, while uh, we have this vector strong vector we will neglect these two parts. So th these two parts are little loose in um, uh, grabbing um, uh, eye attention. Now if we look at the painting, the painter's uh, decision should have been like if uh, this part is very strong and this part is also uh, very strong, they will uh, lose interest in the painting and then the, uh, the eye will go to the next painting. So first I will uh, grab the attention over here and if this part is very heavy, they will look at it and then they will miss these two parts and they will go to the next painting. That can be a condition for the uh, users. So what uh, Kandinsky is doing, uh, he is taking the eye attention which is in the uh, primary optical area but if you look at this part this part is very uh, not so heavy so next part he is uh, uh, taking the eye attention over here then it comes back and then there is a strong uh, visual element over here which directs the eye towards this so there is a different loop going on which is uh, 
not uh, letting this um, uh, process happen. So it doesn't go here and then goes because this is a very strong area and this is a strong area which leads to this place. Even if you look at this area, so here's some circle which uh, an eye like thing which grabs people's att attention and these two parts are pretty heavy in the composition. So uh, you should, um, the user uh, will, uh, com uh, will be compelled to look at these two areas as well so that they cannot go to the next painting. So the painting uh, um, creates more attraction value and attention value in the user's mind. Now, if you look at some of the uh, other Kandinsky's wo uh, work, Kandinsky's work also um, uh, uh, flows into the other uh, style of design, which is expressionism and impressionism, which was not uh, strongly um, um, uh, architectural movement, which was in the paintings movement. So, um, here also he have used the a similar color tone and uh, we see a um, um, geometric pattern emerge from um, uh, the Bauhaus style as well. But this is not a Bauhaus painting because we see here in this painting uh, some um, um, uh, more uh, a little bit figurative depiction of um, uh, uh, features um, are there. So buildings, uh, trees were there and this is part of the impressionist uh, painting which we will we'll discuss later. It is not part of Bauhaus painting but still you will see uh, similar color tone is followed. So blue, uh, yellow and red are the uh, key protagonists of these paintings as well. Now Herbert Baer is an Austrian um, post uh, graphic designer and painter he um, used uh, some uh, he uh, designed some bauhaus posters and in his design bauhaus key concept was uh, clearly uh, followed so if you look at the posters so bauhaus so which is i'm um, like um, he talks about the bauhaus uh, style of architectural design and this uh, he also designed some um, conceptual buildings and uh, these are very conceptual and cannot be pro um, uh, can um, couldn't be um, constructed uh, as uh, they they are just um, juxtaposition of um, pure geometric form, uh, pure geometric uh, shapes and form and then um, pr uh, primary colors. So here this is a, a conceptual design where you, uh, you will see the rectangles are um, just at a 90 degree angle of each other and you will again see the primary colors with black, white and other things. And again in the conceptual design of another um, uh, architectural um, form, he um, used the similar concept and then again uh, cuboid and also you will see some materialistic um, metaphorical of um, representation of ma material like steel and um, bricks which are there in the uh, conceptual design and again the same color palette. So this is a Bauhaus poster, you might have seen this, this is a very famous poster, it talks about the uh, color palette and the forms which are used predominantly in Bauhaus as well as in the Dei Strigil. When we will discuss Dei Strigil, we will um, understand. Even in the font, if you look at the font, the font is derived from the pure geometry. So B is part uh, is combined with circle and a cuboid, and then it's a triangle. Part of U is a circle, and this is this is very geometric font, which is uh, which uh, goes with the Bauhaus uh, font as well. And here we will see the red, yellow, and blue, the primary colors, and the pure shapes, which talks about a uh, Bauhaus uh, color palette and the visual palette. This is a Bauhaus uh, poster and um, uh, Kandinsky, uh, Wesley Kandinsky's poster, which is designed by Herbert Baer uh, to uh, talk about Bauhaus style. And this emerged uh, in um, this um, also the Swiss uh, style of design uh, came from Bauhaus style. So if you look at Swiss um, uh, icons, um, uh, visual design that has a similar color palette, which emerged from the similar uh, similar time, which also is um, Bauhaus. And uh, then uh, in Swiss, you will see red. Uh, black and white. Uh, you won't see uh, blue and yellow in the Swiss uh, style of design. You can check that. And uh, we are not discussing that style here, but that emerged from Bauhaus as well. And um, so, in the Bauhaus font, you will see again the pure geometric form, and this is a very geometric uh, pattern in there. And all these are um, positioned in the rectilinear and 90 degree uh, angle to each other. And uh, uh, here, even in the, uh, uh, you, you can see a face which also becomes the logo of Bauhaus. It, it, it is used in many um, um, cases, um, uh, um, in many ways to uh, represent Bauhaus. Here also, the face is broken into uh, pure geometric 
form or something like this and part uh, which is part uh, within within a circle and uh, here also in this uh, uh, similar kind of faces you will see in the other Bauhaus and their stigil movement and when we will discuss art deco we will see how art deco um, has some similarities with the breaking of uh, an human figure into geometric form which also has uh, Bauhaus uh, started doing it more extensively but art deco also did. Now, uh, if we look at a design of Bauhaus, so, so this is a uh, product design, which is a chair designed by Marcel Brewer, who, who was also part of the Bauhaus school, who is a faculty and uh, in charge of um, uh, furniture design um, a workshop. He designed this chair, which was uh, the model B3 chair. That time when he designed, he uh, named it model B3 chair, uh, that model of chair and uh, this chair became famous later and um, uh, later uh, it, uh, uh, people started calling it a uh, Wesley uh, chair after the name of Wesley Kandinsky who was the uh, Bauhaus um, uh, styles, one of the pioneering um, artist of Bauhaus style. So here we uh, will see the purity of material and uh, the um, uh, steel was used and that was become the aesthetic uh, element over here and here you uh, see the uh, the structural member which is steel and this uh, fabric uh, which goes uh, with each other and this has a hidden geometry and a very clear cut geometry and uh, lines are flowing to e uh, flowing with each other and um, that was the style of this industrial um, design of Bauhaus. Again you will see when uh, this bends, so uh, this uh, this is part of a cuboid and to uh, give it a um, curvilinearity only a very equal uh, curve which is um, uh, uh, which is followed everywhere is used. So if you look at the curve over here which is absolutely uh, similar to the curve uh, which is followed everywhere which is not there in the other uh, design style uh, which is Art Nouveau and others. So you can see a, dr a drastic difference between this uh, style of uh, furniture design with the other style. Now if we look at the other um, Bauhaus designs which is uh, designs which is inspired from the Bauhaus style this is not designed by Marcel Brewer this is some other design. Also you will see the Bauhaus logo over here which we were discussing earlier is broken uh, the face into a geometry and here also you will see so uh, um, pure circular part is added over here and then this is a circle which is again repeated over here and here this is an just an um, re uh, rectangular element added and which is again black and uh, material uh, with its pure color it could have been some other color as well but uh, as it is a Bauhaus style so it followed that um, materials purity even the wood was uh, used in its uh, pure form and this part you will see it's a half circle added over here and that continues uh, within the design and which is followed on the other side as well and here you will see the uh, same line is maintained so this is a style of Bauhaus um, design and when we'll uh, see the other um, architectural um, uh, movements and design movements we will see some uh, similarities with the uh, um, uh, with the Bauhaus uh, style which was uh, there in the internationalist movement in furniture design as well. Now if we look at Bauhaus and uh, then compare with Chicago school as we are uh, discussing Chicago school is also uh, um, functionalist movement which emerged in USA. So here this is a um, uh, building of Chicago school we will um, uh, dis um, discuss this later. This is also uh, if uh, this might be divided into three parts but this is also a uh, pure uh, cuboid which is uh, again talks about the functionalism this is an office building where the service core is there and then the um, everything is arranged accordingly and this fits into a pure uh, form and uh, function is the first protagonist and uh, then form comes after that so also we will see some um, similarity this is the uh, 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 brickwork and then um, glass is used steel and glass and the form is also cuboid uh, so these similarities are there in the uh, Chicago movement which is a parallel movement now let's look at uh, some movement which went after which uh, emerged after Bauhaus uh, so they how they have taken inspiration from Bauhaus this is a internationalist movement this building uh, which is designed by uh, Ludwig uh, Ms. van der Rohe uh, this is called German pavilion in Barcelona so this is a pavilion pavilion for German and uh, which is uh, in Barcelona. So here we will see again the similar um, 
uh, rectilinear form and geometric form and materials at its own uh, tex um, texture. So, here we see stone, here also we see stone and then glass and which is juxtaposed and uh, somehow uh, this is similar to the Herbert Bear's design of juxtaposing uh, each and uh, different um, rectilinear members. But here we do not see um, uh, three different primary color as internationally style talks about more minimalist approach and only white. Uh, black and the pure uh, material was used. Even in the uh, water body you can see uh, the bottom and which is the stone, the stone is also followed over here. So, you can see the similarity and how the visual palette is transformed from uh, in Bauhaus and how it um, um, took in, uh, it uh, inspired the later uh, movement which is uh, internationalist movement. And internationalist movements one of the pioneering uh, uh, architect was uh, Ludwig Mies uh, van der Rohe who was also the uh, last director of Bauhaus school. So, Bauhaus school of uh, architectural uh, thought and their visual style um, uh, got imbibed into the uh, international style uh, uh, through um, one of the pioneering architect like uh, van der Rohe. Now, van der Rohe have also designed a Barcelona chair which falls under the international style. And uh, uh, while discussing the international style, we will see what are the differences of Bauhaus and international style. Right now, it is not possi uh, possible to discuss what are the differences uh, as we have to learn what is international style. Then we will discuss the differences. Now, uh, you can look at this visual similarity. Uh, so, here uh, though it is a little curvilinear uh, thing, but here also you will see the similar kind of uh, treatment was there. The uh, steel was used and then the black uh, cushion uh, was used over here and there is some visual similarity between Bauhaus style and um, international style. So, this is also designed by Ludwig uh, Mies van der Rohe. So, uh, next we will discuss the uh, uh, the stigil movement and how it uh, which is a parallel movement of Bauhaus and how it uh, got influenced uh, by each other. Thank you. Thank you.